call this next section withdrawing judgment. <clears throat> this is just something that, that the Lord has just been teaching me in the last, the last year. In fact, just a year ago in November is when he started teaching me this. So I'm quoting a really famous person here. <laughs> when we are judgmental towards someone, God is forced to defend them because he is a righteous judge and he believes in a fair trial. How good is that? So what happens when we judge someone? Don't judge so that you won't be judged. For the way you judge others is how you will be judged. The measure which, with which you measure out will be used to measure to you. Why do you see the splinter in your brother's eye but not notice the log in your own eye? Did you notice it went from a splinter to a log? <laughs> how can you say to your brother, let me take the splinter out of your eye when you have the log in your eye, you hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, then you will see clearly, so that you can remove the splinter from your brother's eye. So the goal is to remove the splinter, but in the right, with the right intent and with the right heart. That's just the same scripture in, no it's not, sorry. Romans 2, therefore you have no excuse, whoever you are, passing judgment. For when you judge someone else, you are passing judgment against yourself, since you who are judging do the same things he does. We know that God's judgment lands impartially on those who do such things. Do you think that you, a mere man, passing judgment on others who do such things, yet doing them yourself, will escape the judgment of God? Or perhaps you de despise the riches of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, because you don't realize that God's kindness is intended to lead you to turn from your sins. When someone is not functioning as they were created to function, it creates a tension in their soul, and sometimes they behave in ways that we judge them for. We covered this in the last session. Remember that the Lord told me that I was asking for justice for the wrong thing, it was very me-focused. My, my request for just, justice was all about me. But when I focused on her freedom, then I received justice as well. And now our relationship has been restored. Our words and our judgments add to the outer testimony that forms around their life. In essence, we are part of the problem. So remember I was talking about the environmental circumstances that form around a person's life, all of their life, and then we come along and we join in. And we throw rotten tomatoes and, and hit them over the head and you bad person, you, you need to repent. We become a part of the problem. We join the problem. In court, paper is very important. So you think about, have, have you ever been involved in a court case? where you were personally involved in either uh, entering a request for judgment or you were the defendant. How many have been involved in that process? Whether it's uh, a, a legal claim or a divorce or custody or whatever. So you understand the piles of paper <laughs> that go on over the course of a whole claim that goes through the courts from beginning to end, but every single piece of paper is important.